What? We are voting on the idol animations and the static poses. What? <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> and you can see, it's the rotation of all elements. So you've got the water into the fire, into strength, to so the earth, into the air. Oh, let's go. That is great. That is great. Right, 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 right. What we're looking at is a dev blog from yesterday, at the end of the day. It dropped. I skimmed through it. I understood vaguely what it was about. It is a response to a piece of feedback that we have given on camera, which was that the idle animations all look the same. There was a lot of breathing that was a bit distracting. And every character looked exactly the same as every other character, which means the stance was the boxing one, which no character fit the bill as far as that stance. It doesn't make sense. We don't have a boxer class or anything like that. So we've given them that piece of feedback and will you know it, they've actually acted on it before phase three, which releases in three days. I am so hyped for this. Let's go and have a look. Since the beta launched, many of you have given us feedback on many different aspects of the game. And to show you we've been listening to your comments, today we'll be taking a look at characters' idol animations. Boom. They started with a remarkable sentence that sets the tone of, You said, we did, let's discuss. Let's have a look at what they have said and what they have done. We are currently working on changes to the static poses, also known as the idle animations, that are played for a character where they're not doing anything. This is when they're outside standing up, you're not doing anything, you're just zap sitting like Alan. Or when you're inside the fight, but it's not your turn to play. <clears throat> so there's the combat idle, which is when you're in the middle of the fight, and the exploration idle. So before we even look at them, these are the two that we've had, we still have those two. And before, what they looked like is like this for every class, com combined with that heavy breathing, which meant everything was at bobbing like this, in a mildly annoying way, because it was samey across all classes. And the exploration idol, when you were outside, they were just all stood like this, and they had this heavy breathing motion to it as well, which was not great, because it is largely distracting. So what have they done about it? Static poses in combat. Our goal is to provide specific idle animation for each class. They did it. They did it. <laughs> to reflect the unique identity of each of the 19 classes. Here are several proposals for each of them. And we'd like your opinion to help us choose the one we will integrate for the game's official release. The two other options may be animated later after the... Re Ooh! What? We are voting on the idol animations and the static poses. What? <laughs> this is crazy. So my, my first and initial thought was why can't we have all, th all three of them? Or why can't we choose them? Or why can't we decide to randomize them? But they said that they are picking one. I think this is a sort of uh, convenience. They've put a lot of time and effort working them, but they don't want to just work on this. So perhaps they will push one forward, animate it, and then maybe re go back on the other ones and integrate them later or something like that. I do not know. And it's no surprise that they have started with the Kra, the absolute best class, the supreme chief class in the entire game. No, it's not true. It's just because alphabetically it's the... <laughs> right, let's have a look. Oh, so this is one, two, and three. I like number one here. I like number one. I really like number one. Number two is goofy and silly. Number three, why is he smiling and holding his hip? <laughs> He's in a fight. Not in terms of practicality, just the ones that I like. Number one, followed by number three. And this can be deleted from the game and I'll be happy with that. I will not miss it. <laughs> But my favorite one from the style and everything is one. If they can make it slightly less distracting with the lights and stuff that are moving around, the effects and the light that catches your attention, it would be best. But I think it's one of those things where you get used to it, you stop seeing it. But I don't know. The echo flip. Hold on. I'm seeing a pattern. This can go away immediately. This is my favorite. What is up with these poses of characters on the ground? This is a bit too much though. 
It's too distracting and it takes up... Just think about this in the context of having other characters and monsters around you. It's gonna make it entirely harder for you to see anything. And I like this one because it's a bit of a combat pose, but it's just too much. If you have two echo flips and there's mobs around you, then all you can see is the cards. I think number one, I'm gonna go with number one here. Boom. Ooh, these are great, man. Wow. This is not animated, but it's a bit much. It takes entirely too much real estate. When it's pushing it like this. This is an, an enhanced version of this. So this can go away. This is meh. This is great. This is a, a banger. <laughs> Holy shit. This is a banger. And this is my favorite one so far. Okay. The inner rips. Okay. I see what they're doing here. Absolute favorite. Number two. This is good. This is good. This is the first one. I don't feel like binning any of them. They're fine. They're all alright. Right. Let's have a look at the Enutrov. I feel as though they haven't put much effort into the Enutrov, <laughs> if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> They've not put much effort, but in not putting much effort, they have found a good formula. One that is not distracting, that is really cool, that tells you what the class is, but does not overpower the gameplay. It is not great as far as the fancy stuff they've done with other classes, but it gets the job done. And my favorite is this one. This is number two, and this is number three, and none of them are a straight up bin. Oh, yes, 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 I like this, yes, yes. Yes, this is so cool. This is so cool. Oh, this is great. This is so cool. <laughs> this is so cool. Number one, number two, number three. Just because this is missing some fire, so this can go. But, 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 I have to say, but, but. I would be perfectly happy if they picked this decision. This is this looks like the Enutroph direction, where it's not too overpowering, it's not got fancy effects, it is relatively low effort, but it conveys all the information. You know that it's a Fekka, you know that it's uh, in a fight, it is an, a customized idol stance for it, so it's proper to the Fekka, it's great. I would say, if they just put this kind of effort into all of them, I would be perfectly happy. But I'm not gonna lie. A little part of me right now loves those little side effects. The burning fire. The, oh, let's go. Number three is just so good. It's so good. <laughs> and you can see, it's the rotation of all elements. So you've got the water into the fire, into strength, to so the earth into the air oh let's go that is great that is great i'm just worried deeply deeply worried about people whose computers will not be able to handle this <laughs> i feel as though all right all right i found it i found it i found it and hear me out <clears throat> hear me out hear me out we don't have the ability to reduce graphics and everyone in the stream today the new ones will not have heard it, but anybody who has tuned to one of my rants will know that I'm a big proponent of giving people options, just like they've done today. They've decided to remove spell animations, tactical mode. I feel like that's an imposition on the style of play and the individual choices. And I'm all for maximizing choices and giving people the ability to choose which ones they want and when they want them. And I feel like this is the perfect example for it. I would love three, the way I've put it in the past, is three levels of animation that you can switch from. So there is no zero, maybe number one is very reduced animation and as close as what we've had in 2.0. Heavily reduced animation, medium level of animations and high graphics where you can see the fires, the movement, the environment is moving, everything is so much alive and you get the full effect of unity. And this would be the perfect use case for it. Minimum graphics, level one, you get this. No fire, no nothing, easy on your computer and whatever, whatever, whatever. Level 2, you get a bit more fire and animation. Level 3, you get the full cards moving around and character doing backflips and whatever. I think Fekka is now the new number one. Eliotrop, 
the second. Well, anyway, I like it. Oh. Okay, okay. Scratch that. The Enutroph is not the lowest effort anymore. This is the lowest effort anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this is the new lowest effort. There is absolutely nothing going on. But if I had to choose, I would say number one or number two. I don't think any of them. I'll tell you what. There is not a single good one here. Or I would say all three are good for level one animation. They're fine as basic stuff. Because you don't know that it's a forge launch here. There's no launch, no nothing into it. How do you know, like, it, the crow, whatever it is that you're doing, it's got a bow out, so you know that it's a Christ, the crack glass. You've got the cards here. Even the granny, the Eliotrop, you've got the Wakfu energy in the back. Uh, the Eneripsa, you've got the elements of the potions, the healings, the aura around it. The Enutroph, low effort, but you still have the spade and whatever, all the items that indicate it's an Enutroph. This one, nothing. Zero. Nothing. No F. This is the lowest effort I've seen so far. And just the stances themselves, I think one is good, but if they enhanced it with a lance or something, I don't know. I feel like all of them are a toss. Complete toss, all of them. Ooh. Oh, we get four here. <laughs> Tell me you have a favorite class without telling me you have a favorite class on camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, first thing, heavily flashing lights. Uh, this is not good. <laughs> and it's too distracting. Yes, you're absolutely right. It is too distracting, especially number four. Number three is my favorite here. Number number three is I'm fighting, but I'm waiting to do something. And you can tell I'm a hopper mage. I've got this reduce maybe the straw boy effect from it. This... Uh, is it a waiter? Is it what? what? Is it a guard? Is it what are you doing here? <laughs> this is a complete toss. This one looks like it's offering cake, but it's about to stab you the moment you try and eat it. <laughs> this one looks like a waiter and a guard combined. No, 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 no. I think this one is my favorite. Number three is my favorite. I like what they're doing with the hand and the energy in it and stuff like that. It's quite cool. But it's too distracting. Too much. This is an example of too much. We've seen an example of too little. <laughs> Not an example of entirely too much. Ooh, the IOP. IOP is easy. Very straightforward. I like what they've done with this design element here. The unorthodox sword. But I wish it, it didn't look like a zombie that is dying. But rather, this stance right here. Three is my favorite stance. Alright, let's put it this way. Uh, this is my favorite stance, but this is my favorite design. So a good compromise here would be the stance from here plus this sword. So standing this way with a sword that is unorthodox. And this stance right here is a complete toss. I don't know why an IOP is standing like a zombie. What, does it make any sense? And this is a good example of not doing too much and it hits the point home. It drives it home. You know it's an IOP, he's holding a sword, it's a stance, fight, and it's not too distracting, above all, on any of the three of them. Now, because the Osa is a class that nobody plays or cares about, we're just going to skip it and go straight to the... <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. I heard Pedro have a mini heart attack already. <laughs> Alright, okay, okay, let's have a look at what's happening. So the first one is juggling with a tofu, right? Number two has a whip. Number three, a different stance, but the same, a whip. And number four has two tofus on it. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. This one, the stance is good. This is too distracting. This is too distracting. This is good. This in its entirety is marvelous. I like the facial expression, the combat stance, the dominant hand in the back ready to lash and whip and hit. This is good. This is my favorite. This is my number one. Because it is direct confrontation, combat stance, you get all the elements from it, no fancy stuff. 
minimal movement and no, it doesn't hit the eye with fancy animations and lights and flying things. This can be deleted right now. <laughs> this can be deleted right now. <laughs> this can go away straight up. <laughs> this can go away right now. But these two are examples of do less, get more with less. They're perfect. They convey the message. They have all the elements from the class. The combat stances are great. And they don't visually clutter. I like three because there's less of this movement right here. There is some movement, but it's minimal, and I like it most. So, boom, 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 boom. Ooh, Uginak. All right, let's go. The dog class. What? 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 <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Tell me I'm your least favorite class without telling me I'm your least favorite class. So in this one right here, I will vote for number four. It's the best one. It's easy. It doesn't hurt the eye. It's very well designed <laughs> compared to all this rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? <gasps> what is this? <laughs> I think they could here's it. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> They've done all the classes and somebody reminded them. Oh shit, we forgot the Uginak. And right before they had to press go live on the post, before they posted it, they had to scrape something together in 10 seconds. That's the only explanation. And I'm being very charitable. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, there's a class I will be playing a lot. Ooh. Oh, I really like this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. The come and fight me stance with the hand. That was really cool. Come and fight me. <laughs> that was adorable. That was really cool. That was casting a spell, I imagine. Getting drunk and getting sober. I like this. I really like this. It's got all the elements necessary. It tells you it's a panda, so you know the class just visually from looking at the animation. It's appropriate. It's a fight stance, and it's nothing fancy. I like this, but I don't know that a panda's fight stance should look like this. At best, it should be like a Shaolin monk or something, something unorthodox rather than boxing fight. This is good without all the fancy stuff. I would be happy with either of two, but I have a clear preference for this one. This one can go away. That is an example that this is just like the Enutroph and the other classes they've done very little with, but that works very well. Like the Fekka number two. Oh, oh, great. Glorious. Great. I don't know how I feel about this. First of all, First thing I notice is, this looks like a megaphone, like it, the rogue is about to make an announcement from this angle. You can hardly tell that it's a weapon. Here, you can tell it's a weapon. Here, it looks like it's about to tell you, uh, like, if you see it, say it, sorted. <laughs> like an announcement at the train station. <laughs> I like the bomb element, without any sparkles, fuses and animated stuff, really good. I would say three wins just because this one is rubbish and this one is a bit too much with the weapons looking outside. No bombs, no nothing. Yes, these are the two elements. This has the potential to be the best one because it combines the two elements that make the rogue. The, the, the guns that it uses to shoot things and the bombs. So, I like it. The feet got bigger. Decoy back again with the feet back. <laughs> Careful, you're gonna summon Gluto. <laughs> Careful with that. <laughs> Ooh, the Sacri. Oh, that, that is the shortest animation. Really hard, really hard, really hard. This might be controversial, but I like number three. It's my favorite. It's got the blood dripping and it's got the hand that has the power and blood as well. So it will cast stuff. But at the same time, I really like these elements right here. Like for casting spells and hitting, I think these have great potential. I don't know if they already have them on, 
but this looks great from a class spell perspective, like attraction, it would just cast those things and attract you to it. But generally speaking, this is a clear winner and there isn't a single bad design. All of them are good, good, good. I like all three of them. I think Sacria is very, very well done. Oof, what have they done to the Sadi? No! <laughs> no! Why is Sadi holding tentacles? No! Holding a doll and tentacles. I don't know. This, like, this is Wolverine. What the hell is this? Oh, what is this? Oh, what is that? Uh, this is... Uh, I think there isn't a single successful one. I like the element f this and this. These two elements are good, but perhaps in this stance. So the stance from here and the elements from here, possibly a W. But I honestly, what is this? This is too much. <clears throat> and this is before you use items and things like that. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe just delete the class entirely. <laughs> That's so true. That's so true. <laughs> this is absolutely rubbish. I have, I feel bad for any Sadie mains. <laughs> but yeah, I like the elements from this. The tentacle, the doll, pixel perfect. And the stance from this one without the Wolverine stuff. Without the Wolverine arms. Before we even start with this one, I feel like it's going to be the best one. We've looked at the animations previously. The Shram was the absolute number one. Undisputed. If you forget about the traps, the shit that they've done, the rubbish they've done with the traps. <laughs> I hope they fix those because they look stonking rubbish. But <clears throat> the animation, the spell animations from the Shram were the absolute best ones. They were up there easily number one. Ooh. They are all right. They are all right. I would say number one, number two. I'm hesitant between delete and number three. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure, but I really like this. I really like this. The phonetic, it looks like the phonetic side. I, I really like this. This is my absolute favorite one. Number two, number three. And maybe delete. I mean, the stance makes sense. The stance makes sense. It's a ninja, stealthy, come and kill you, disappear. It makes sense. It does make sense. Maybe I will revise this to number two and this number three. But my personal preference is this is one, this is two, this is three. I think what they went with, with there is the Grim Reaper. This is what they went with, this kind of stance of holding a scythe and I'm ready to kill at any moment. This. I like it. I like the shrine that looks like a Grim Reaper. It's successful. Oh, the Fogonaut! Let's go! Controversy, because it feels so empty. I don't know how I feel about this. This looks like a mechanic that has come to fix your broken down car. So, this looks like he's chatting you up like he's telling you about his day. This one can go away <laughs> This is good, but the ratchet is a bit weird. Three wins here. But I don't like that the one that wins has the worst element of the lot. What is this gun? I think it's... Uh, uh, no, no, <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, it's still my number one regardless. But there's something that needs to be done with this to make it better. But this is my favorite. Number one, number two. And this just looks like a mechanic that is talking to you and trying to charm you. This can go away. <laughs> Hair dryer. <laughs> Oof. Oof. The Zellor. Holy shit. What? Ooh. Oh my god, all three of them are great. I'm gonna say this is a bit much because of the size of it, and it spins, but it's so cool, it's so cool! All three of them are great. I would go with... Ah, oh, if this was not too overpowering with lights and movements and things like that, it would be my absolute number one. But this is my number one, this is my number two, and this is my number three, and this is an example of all three of them being potentially number one, and they're all great. I think Zelor. Overall, all three designs 
is the number one. It's the only class. They've done a fucking amazing job. Way beyond expectations on all three designs. So this one is going to be, for me, so far, the hardest one to pick from. And I don't care which way people vote, it's going to be a banger regardless. This is one where they don't need to go back to the drawing board and try and find the solution or anything like this. This is so good, man. This is great. Holy shit. The, the other thing, yeah. So if they can just... Do, do you see this design right here, this clock on the ground? If they add this here, it would enhance it massively. Or on all of them, you stood on maybe not this design right here but the clock that moves so that the movement of the arms of the clocks the ticking of them is subtle i would say an arm that is this size is much more subtle than two arms that are this size as far as seeing and it's underneath it so you don't see all that stuff outside of the character like what what i mean by that is this circle if there's a mob stood here and a mob here and a mob here these two will be affected. It's going to be really hard for vis visibility, given that this is the idle stance. I think using elements, but either in the body or on the body, close to them, or on the ground underneath them, is a good formula to minimize clutter, which is going to make it really hard if you're playing eight-man teams and eight mobs as well. <clears throat> but generally speaking, I really like the Zellor. They've nailed it straight from the go. It doesn't need much doing to it. It's amazing. WHAT HAVE THEY DONE?! <laughs> WHAT'S GOING ON HERE?! <laughs> WHAT?! <laughs> How many designs have they put in here for the mask? What? What? What's what am I looking at? Is this a dance-off? Look at this! Woo! Woo! <laughs> Let's go! Let's go! Everybody, jiggle that jiggle! Let's go! Wiggle that jiggle! <laughs> What's going on here? What the fuck? Have they accidentally put it on 10 times speed or something? Oh, the masks, because it's got too many masks. This is... Oh, uh, why is he holding the mask instead of wearing them, though? Why? I mean, this is great for visibility, but it, did, it was not a problem to begin with. You could always see what mask you were wearing from looking at your character. And if you played with creature mode, looking at your spells will tell you which one it is because it's the one that is greyed out that you can't use or just the spells that you can cast, the damage you can deal, the spells you have access to. This is absolutely rubbish, I don't like this at all. But here's the thing, here's how they designed them. So we are looking at these three, these two and these three, right? This is what we're looking at. This is the combat stance by default. And when you put on a mask, it's put in the four. I understand. It's good. But just out of these three, I'm gonna go with three. This is two. This is three. Uh, it's a really hard choice. Because if I were to be completely honest, all of them. <laughs> They're a complete toss. The lot of them. The mask needs a complete re- I don't know why they violated it like that. Right. A few details on how these animations work. The diversity of class-specific idle animations and spell animations relies on a requirement to return to the common idle animation when your turn comes up. Understandable. You have you go from idle stance to spell animation to idle stance. <clears throat> Specifically, at the end of each spell or movement animation, your character returns to the common animation, exactly as I said. And at the end of their turn, they then they transition to specific... Oh! Wow, okay. So, when you're not playing your turn, you are in a class animation. Then what, when it is your, your turn, you go into a common animation, idle animation. And then, when you cast your spell, you go into spell animations, and then you return to common idle animation. And then when you end your turn, you go to class specific. I see. Hold on. Idle. <coughs> idle of the class. Spell. Okay, okay, okay. Right, so, 
Class Idol. <clears throat> this is when your turn is finished and it starts. You are in a class idol if you don't use anything. The moment you use a spell, you go towards the spell animation and there's an interim common, like the old one that we've all disliked, where it holds place while you transition into the next spell or transition into your class idol. I have no problem with that. I don't see, however... What's the problem with having idol go into this, into this, back into this? Why not make the idol be class? Why can't it be class? Why couldn't we have the class one here? Because when you cast your spell, is using an element from here instead of going to that just go back to the normal one i don't know i don't know in the future the system will allow us to offer multiple class idols for each of them Ooh, did you hear the dollar sign <laughs> i know a lot of you every single thing they do you can already hear the packs that you'll be able to buy in the shop for it <laughs> uh. Oh lord. <laughs> Static poses outside of combat. So we have seen the idle animations mid combat. So this is when you're inside the static poses in combat. They look great. Absolute favorite, Zelor. Second favorite, the number one from the Eliotrop. The third favorite is the uh, Fekas number three. Boom. That's it. I've given you my top three. These are my absolute favorite ones. <clears throat> The Shrine is a strong number four. The Hopper is too much as we've said. There's too much going on. The light from two sources and it's stroboscopic. It, it can give people epilepsy attacks with how much color changes and how bright it is. The Sacri number three is a strong five. Yep, strong number five. But we've seen that there are two things they've done here. There's the very low effort that works, and there's the fancy stuff that doesn't work, and then there's the fancy stuff that really works well. Static poses outside of combat. Later on. Static poses outside of combat. Later on, we hope to offer different idle animation outside of combat. For now, they are designed to be common to all classes so that we can either give you the choice of which to use or play them at random this is fantastic this is you running and then you stop and then they go into one of these four brilliant keep all four of them and if you stand make it on a timer every minute it goes from one to the other like they have in whack for and wave and i think i've seen something like that idle animation of on a timer at random of a certain pool that already exists. Keep all four. Fabulous. I love this. I love this. <clears throat> Number four is really cool. But it doesn't make sense for all classes. But I'm still happy with it. Not every class initially will have. Later on we hope to offer different idol animations. But for now. These are designed to be common to all classes. And I love this direction.